Hello, dear teachers. Peter Guriaev will speak before you. You, teachers, deal with the most important mental construction of a person, this is a word. It turns out that the word is directly related to our genetic apparatus. It turns out that thinking is realized through the chromosomal functions of neurons in the brain. The neurons in the brain are the most powerful system that synthesizes proteins. The body is a purely physical thing, the spiritual body cannot be felt, but it moves us, without it we are a conglomeration of muscles and bones. When studying DNA, it turned out that the nucleotide sequence is speech-like. Analysis of the sequence of nucleotides showed that these are speech or quasi-speech structures. The correlate of consciousness and thinking is protein words, protein sentences that are synthesized in the cerebral cortex. Do you know what is neurolinguistic programming? It has to do with DNA. Any significant historical figure had the ability to generate verbal wave genes. They are mobile, very mobile, but they enable a person to be stable in the spiritual sense of the word. If a person is not resistant to verbal viruses, then his mental structure disintegrates, and then the physical body also disintegrates. I want to show you a slide about a small but very important transformation of the standard table of the genetic code. Francis Crick together with James Watson received the Nobel Prize for the discovery of the DNA double helix. Since then, some controversies arose, which Francis Crick fell silent, and I read his memories, and he led away in the direction of research. He wrote in his book, does not see the obvious meaning in the model of the genetic code that he created. Speech constructions begin with a table of the genetic code. If you examine the table of the genetic code, it turns out that this table is contradictory. This raises the typical linguistic problem of homonymy. There are codons, synonyms that are in excess responsible for the inclusion of the same acid, this is the redundancy of genetic information, there is nothing to worry about. But there are codons that have homonymy. These are multi-sense codons. Two identical homonyms are responsible for the synthesis of two different amino acids. We are now trying to deduce genetics mental research. We prove experimentally and theoretically that the genetic apparatus has the ability to think. Of course, this is not at the level of the cerebral cortex. Thinking has fractality, it is of different scales and within the framework of the genetic code it is incommensurable with the work of the brain, but the genetic apparatus understands and understands. You know that homonyms can only be understood in context, that is, in the whole sentence. Our genetic apparatus builds DNA phrases, homonyms are found in these phrases. In order to choose the right amino acid, you need to understand the context of messenger RNA, which is the matrix of the protein. The fact that there is a homonymous part of DNA was hidden. Because, if we recognize that there is homonymy in DNA, then we must recognize the work of our genome as an intelligent system. And this is not good, according to materialists from genetics, it leads to the idea of God. I believe that nature is God. Nature is intelligent, nature is semantic. The universe is semantic. We return to the classic thesis that in the beginning there was a word. But this is not an accurate translation, at the beginning there was a thought. There are simple convincing experiments. For example, Luther Burbank, an American geneticist, persuaded, it sounds ridiculous, but it is a fact, he persuaded a cactus that had long needles, but was tasty, it was eaten. He tried to remove these needles by selection, but failed. Then he began to talk with this cactus and tried to persuade him to remove the needles, and after a number of generations these needles were gone. A group of researchers, on their own initiative, worked with plants, they mentally imagined the shape of the leaves of the plants, their size, colors, and asked, programmed the plants so that they create a specific leaf shape. First slide. Here is the famous yin-yang symbol. Unity and struggle of opposites. It turns out that one can change nothing in the genetic code, but simply rearrange the codons that are responsible for the synthesis of proteins in accordance with the principle of DNA complementarity. That is, adenine is complementary to thymine, guanine is complementary to cytosine. Then you need to paint red codons, homonyms, and blue codons, synonyms. This is what happens with this manipulation. Yin Yang turns out, Codons, synonyms are responsible for the stability of genetic information. And codons, homonyms are responsible for the mobility of the genetic apparatus. 
There were works in the United States, in Israel and in Russia, where it was shown that wave processes in DNA molecules can play the role of subjects of information reading. There are special, stable waves in DNA that have the ability to read this information from DNA molecules and translate it into the intracellular space and outside the biosystem. There is another role of the genetic apparatus, it works on figurative structures. The biosystem needs figurative information in order to build its four-dimensional, space-time structure. This is realized by the so-called holographic memory. What is it for? This is necessary in order to create some marking vectors that allow the embryo to develop correctly, so that his body parts are in the right place. Official genetics objects to this. Because, unfortunately, it has already stagnated, despite the cries of great success. Remember the program, the human genome? It cost $20 billion to analyze the sequence of 3 billion nucleotides on our 46 chromosomes. As a result, it was found that only 1% of genes are responsible for the synthesis of proteins, and 99% is garbage, according to official genetics. Genetics does not understand and does not want to understand that 99% works on the principles of holography. This is the second hypostasis of the work of the genetic apparatus after speech. The third hypostasis is especially interesting. It is quantum non-locality or the teleportation of genetic information. It turns out that you can teleport not only thoughts. There is an entanglement. This is the third hypostasis of the genetic apparatus. Works begin to appear that try to understand the genetic code and all genetics from the standpoint of quantum physics. I tried to convince scientists that the genetic apparatus works not only at the material level, but also at the wave level. They laughed at me when I offered them to make a DNA laser. All chromosomes of all living things are structures that emit laser light. There was a question, is it possible to create an artificial DNA laser? I convinced our scientists for about five years to make a DNA laser. We pumped up DNA and chromosomes so that they began to emit coherent light. Pumped with a yellow line, the highlight was obtained at about 390 nanometers, blue ultraviolet light. It was published but went unnoticed. Six years later a work by Japanese authors appeared, where they did the same work and stated that they had created a DNA laser. Thus our work was confirmed. We have created equipment that simulates holographic processes. Next slide. This is the setup. This laser, which mimics chromosomal radiation, works on polarized photons. The polarization of a photon is a change in spin. Genetic wave information is recorded on the spins of photons. This modest setting allowed us to transmit genetic information read from the pancreas and transmit it over a distance of 20 kilometers in animals that did not have a pancreas. They were poisoned with a special poison that kills the pancreas and the animals died from type 1 diabetes. And in all animals the pancreas regenerated. That is, genetic information can be transmitted over any distance, because these are torsion fields. And the biosystem of the recipient can be controlled. Next slide. Here is the negative information. We have damaged the plant's DNA. There is a violation of the structure, including a violation of the speech structures of the DNA molecule. Second violation, you change the hologram. We transmitted damaged genetic information over a distance of 7 kilometers in all directions. We saw that almost all of the plants to which we fed the damaged genetic information mutated. Large bars are mutations. The little red bars are background mutations. That is, mutagenesis is a deadly process for plants, it is an extremely dangerous thing. But we were careful and careful. What does official genetics do? She planted on us the technology of genetically modified food additives. You know, the greens are fighting this. Because it really is Frankenstein's food. In the United States, all honey bees that fed in genetically modified fields died. Bees are much more sensitive to these things than we are. And this is the first signal that we are going in the wrong direction, not understanding the linguistic nature of the genetic apparatus. We do not understand, we get genetically modified food, which gives huge income. That is, gold rules. We consume all this, it will hit the second, third generation of our children. You have to do something about it. Next slide. Here's what we did in Toronto. Here is the sugar level at the beginning. 
control sugar level. Then we poison them with a special poison that kills the pancreas. Sugar rises. We enter information at a distance of 20 kilometers. Then at a distance of 3 meters. Sugar drops and comes to normal. This means that we have regenerated the pancreas. In Toronto, these works were quickly curtailed and we were sent to Russia. They, roughly speaking, just stole our ideas and our equipment. This is how the pancreas regenerates. Under the control. Here is the killed pancreas. What happened after the regeneration? It is a wave form of immunity. In order for us to regenerate an arm or a leg, we need to request the memory of how it was. Lizard, salamander do it. The crab's claws are regenerated. Here is a woman, 60 years old. She has no teeth. Prostheses. When we treated her for diabetes, we read information from the blood of her 10-year-old grandson, who was actively cutting teeth. Her upper and lower jaw is swollen. She was shocked and did not understand what was happening. We found that she had three new teeth. All this is a path to aging inhibition. So that we live not 70 or 80 years, but 200 to 400. Because the aging program is contained in our genetic apparatus. You just need to understand that the genetic apparatus works on the principles of linguistics, holography, quantum non-locality, teleportation. Here is the Charcot Marie tooth disease. Motionless legs. A month later, the muscles got stronger. The feet begin to move. Then our wave matrices were converted into a radio wave form. Transcribed as sound in MP3 format. Just let people listen to it. Their conductivity indices have sharply changed in the positive direction. The statistics are excellent. Biological time has a fractal structure. That is, the times with an extended stroke and a compressed stroke. If we do not understand the principle of fractality of biological time, we will never be able to slow down aging and will not live 1000 years. Some thermophile bacteria live in two fractal dimensions. They live at 400 degrees Celsius. In our time, at our pace, and therefore bacteria can be seen through a microscope. And live in an extended time, this is a different fractal dimension. Temperature is a function of time. If you have stretched the time, then you have lowered the temperature. Phantom DNA effect. An experiment, we aimed a laser beam on DNA, then removed the effect. It would seem that everything should return to the first state. Nothing like this. We continue to register DNA phantoms. That is, roughly speaking, after our death, something remains. We don't disappear anywhere. Such structures fly out of DNA. It is generally not clear what it is. Phantom DNA. 2001. An image appears in England. It's like the answer. In 1974, information about us was sent from a telescope in South America. There was a head, a human figure, a DNA molecule, our solar system, and so on. Here's what they sent. Double helix. Little man with a small head. That's what they sent us back. Here is a head much larger than ours. They are smarter than us. Here is their DNA molecule. That is, as if the right side he himself tried to analyze this for a long time. I believe this is a warning that we are on the wrong path in our genetics. You do not take into account the wave, speech, mental functions of the DNA molecule. You are driving yourself into a transgenic dead end, the apocalypse of transgenic food. The markets of Russia, Belarus, Ukraine and Africa are filled with transgenic products. Here is such a short excursion into wave and linguistic genetics, which is directly related to the work of the brain, with its mental structure. This is our chromosomal mental apparatus, which has no price. Thank you.